Is this latest news at the beginning of the Pac-12 collapse? Could this be the point that we start to see Pac-12 schools leave the conference? Somebody got some news on Thursday, and of course, it came after I recorded the full Winning Cures Everything podcast, uh, which by the way, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, make sure and check out our sponsor, BetUS. They are where the game begins. There's a link in the description for that. Pete Thamel at ESPN and Stuart Mandel and Max Olson at The Athletic all put out stories yesterday with the same piece of news. The Pac-12 media rights deal won't be done until later this spring or this summer. Now, multiple Pac-12 presidents had recently said a deal was imminent. Uh, Arizona State President Michael Crow told the state press that the conference was in the final stages, and he said, quote, I think we're close to a deal. Arizona President Robbins said weeks uh, for a timeline in a recent interview. Of course, uh, Robbins then came back last week. He told Dennis Dodd that a deal wasn't close, which at really, when you look at last week's story, those recent stories, or these recent stories from Thamel and The Athletic, shouldn't really be a surprise at that point, right? The Athletic article stated that the articles were overly optimistic. ESPN, I believe, said too optimistic. Uh, now, the ESPN story says that the Pac-12 remains engaged with multiple media partners, but it doesn't specify which networks. The Athletic story, on the other side, uh, it says that the delay may be in part because of the emergence of a new potential partner. Uh, two sources indicated there have been recent discussions between the Pac-12 and the CW, a national over-the-air broadcast network better known for scripted shows like Gossip Girl, Supernatural, and Riverdale. Since purchasing the CW network last year, parent company Nexstar Media Group has expressed interest in procuring live sports rights, announcing in January a deal with Live Golf. All right, so if you want proof that this stuff came specifically from Pac-12 sources, you can look at the fact that both stories go into detail comparing the timing of a potential deal to the Big Ten's most recent deal, which I did mention on a recent show. Kevin Warren and company announced their new deal in August, 11 months before the old contract expired. Uh, quoting from The Athletic, he, they said, The conference, whose current deal expires in the summer of 2024, remains on pace for a customary media rights timeline. Pete Thamel tweeted, uh, the new Big Ten deal was agreed to in August of 2022, about a year before the current one expired. The Pac-12 is on a similar timeline trajectory. This is all basically the Pac-12 trying to get everyone not to panic. Uh, but it's not the truth. Like, there's nothing customary about that. The SEC's deal with ESPN, uh, which starts in 2024, it was announced in December 2020. The new Big 12 deal, you know, the one your mark jumped ahead in line for, that was done two and a half years before the current one expires. Like, don't let them fool you. This is not the normal standard. Uh, the situation is the same as we told you before. The NBA, UFC, NASCAR, etc., all those rights are coming up. Those properties are more valuable than the Pac-12. On top of that, the country's economy is in a recession right now. Disney's cutting 7,000 jobs. ESPN layoffs are coming. Fox already has what they want as far as inventory is concerned. NBC just signed in with the Big Ten. They've got Notre Dame's rights coming up. Uh, the only thing left really, for the Pac-12, is either a streaming company or a lesser-known linear option like the CW or Ion TV. And a lot of people laugh at the CW. But again, as we mentioned before, the station was just purchased by Nexstar Media Group in October 2022, so it makes sense that they might be interested in shaking things up. Uh, the purchase was done in October. They signed the deal with Live Golf in mid-January, uh, which included both a streaming and linear aspect. Early rounds of the Live Golf tournaments are streamed on the CW app, and the weekends are broadcast live on CW, which is part of the new, uh, the newly formed CW Sports Division. The CW channel, uh, it was founded in 1996, so it's only about 27 years old. It, this isn't CBS, NBC, Fox, etc., as far as legacy is concerned. Uh, they've got 216 stations across the U.S., and they certainly have room for growth, as that channel, per Wikipedia's 2020 numbers, has an operating income of $1.375 billion and a net income of $808 million. That leaves $567 million to work with. It's plenty of money to rip off $300 million annually to secure exclusive rights to the Pac-12, which would set up the CW with actual live sports programming rather than the scripted stuff that's, you know, typically on their channels. Uh, so what's, what's with the shift in the CW? I went back and read through some articles to figure out the station's initial purpose, and it was a joint effort by CBS and Warner Brothers, which I'm sure you get. CBS, Warner Brothers, CW, 
Um, it was a joint effort that operated at a loss for the most part because they didn't care about live viewers. Now, this is from a story in Forbes back in 2016. Uh, they wrote this after talking to CBS president Les Moonves. Uh, it said, unlike the big four of CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox, the CW is not a network trying to make a money on a grand scale off its live viewership. Rather, it was created as a vessel for first-run domestic broadcast. Why is that important? Because without somewhere to air first, there's no way for television studios to achieve the syndication-friendly number of 88 episodes necessary for profitable second-tier syndication deals. The CW is a network created with the singular goal of getting the shows of its parent company to syndication qualifying numbers. That's why most of its programming still runs traditional 22-episode seasons and why there's never been outside programming from the likes of 20th Century Fox, NBC Universal, and ABC Studios featured on it. Now remember, that was from 2016. Today, Paramount and WB only own 12.5% each of this station. Nexstar, as the 75% majority owner, understands that as the largest local broadcast television operator reaching 116 different markets, live TV is the way to be profitable. You're not getting a bunch of these shows license-free anymore, right? So they have to do something that brings in eyeballs. The Pac-12 is not worth as much to ESPN as it is to a station like uh, CW or to the company Nexstar who wants in on the sports media rights game. Everybody gets the CW. The app is free. You don't have to have a password to access it, all that mess. Uh, everybody could get these games without any kind of subscription. And that's the key here. Games on CBS, ABC, NBC, and Fox all consistently outdraw ESPN, FS1, etc. Because, shocker, I know, those are all OTA channels, over-the-air channels. You can pick them up with just a TV antenna. So can something happen with the CW or even Ion Sports? We didn't talk about them, but uh, that could change the course of a potential Pac-12 disaster? Absolutely. But by pushing this thing back, you're taking on a whole lot of risks, right? For example, Kevin Warren's last day with the Big Ten is April 17th. Uh, do the presidents decide then that they want to extend an invitation to Washington and Oregon once Warren is out of the way? Like, who knows? Rumors are out there that uh, we're going to see some stories come out about how things weren't exactly peachy in that relationship after the Big Ten media rights deal was announced, and, you know, he decided to go after the Chicago Bears job. But it, it was widely expected that the Big Ten was not going to do anything so long as Kevin Warren was still in charge, right? Another example of potential risk is, of course, listed in the athletic story. Uh, their sources said that Klyovkov is not overly concerned about any of the four corner schools leaving just yet. Uh, but Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark has recently met with multiple presidents of Pac-12 schools looking to explore their options, a person briefed on the meeting said. Jason Shear, of course from Arizona's 247 uh, site, he tweeted yesterday that Yormark wet with, uh, met with Colorado's president for five hours recently. Like He reported that a few weeks ago. But you don't meet for five hours with somebody if you're just checking in, right? Remember, Colorado, and we've talked about this on the show, they want to maintain their academic integrity, but there has been a philosophical shift in Boulder in regards to football. They've changed a lot about how their football program operates. As I've said before, you don't bring in Deion Sanders as a head coach just to hide him away on a streaming service. Like My guess is your mark is going to continue to put pressure on these presidents uh, that have been talking to reporters. Uh, they're all likely irritated and impatient because Pac-12 leadership has given them bad information, which they went and put their name behind publicly. Like, for example, I'll quote The Athletic here. Uh, this is from their story. Washington State President Kirk Schultz told the Mercury News uh, John Wilner in February, my sense is we need to get it done in March, in mid-March, hopefully. Oregon State's Murthy expressed much of the same in an interview with John Canzano. And then you've got Arizona State's Crow and Arizona's Robbins, both making a deal sound imminent by late March. But on March 20th, Utah's Taylor Randall said on the Bill Riley Show in Salt Lake City, I think we've still got a ways to go. On top of that, the sources indicated there's a divide in the room between those that want to get a deal done now and those that are willing to be patient if it means a better deal. But what exactly is a better deal? Like, Is, is it just more money or is it more linear exposure? Like, What are the exact expectations for all 10 of the presidents? Like Again, we still haven't heard how the Pac-12 is going to resolve the Comcast overpayments. Uh, there hasn't been anything new on the, you know, the San Diego State or SMU expansion front either. 
which again, I guess makes sense because you can't invite teams to a conference that may soon not exist, I suppose. Uh, to wrap this up, yes, I am still tired of talking about the Pac-12. And I know you're saying, hey, it, it's your show. You don't have to talk about it. I get that. Uh, but I, I don't know if some of you guys really grasp how historic this is. Like, we're watching the potential collapse of a century-old conference. It's a conference that was formed in 1915 that could just fall by the wayside because of TV dollars. Like, it, this conference was the PCC. They were formed by Oregon, Washington, Cal, and Oregon State. Uh, they were joined by Washington State and Stanford in 1916, joined by USC, UCLA, and then, surprise, Idaho and Montana in the 1920s. We've seen older conferences fall. Uh, you know, we saw the Big East fall apart. Uh, we saw membership changes, like Idaho and Montana drop into FCS while Utah jumps up, et cetera. But it, this is incredible to watch happen in real time. Like all the leaked information and the, the contradicting stories, the potential for more realignment, you know, uh, we're going to be here for all of it, even though it's exhausting. Uh, go ahead and comment with your thoughts. I, I'm curious about your opinion because – I, I honestly have no idea what to think anymore. Psst. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.